we will come across at least four basic themes in this short chapter. You will see God enthroned in his holiness. That's one. Two, you will see the sinfulness of the human heart and God's ample provision to deal with the sinfulness of the human heart. He's capable, he's able. Amen. You will also see the great privilege of being on mission for God. Yes. And number four, you will see that God is sovereign over human rebellion. Amen. It doesn't matter what happens in Israel, God can handle that. Hello, church. Yes. His love is broad, it is deep, it is sufficient, it can handle anything God's love. Amen. So for us the question, why did God permit sin? Brother Aki. And I'm saying that God's love can handle anything, even sin. Yes. 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 You have to understand when God looks into the future and he sees a Lucifer and a sin and he's afraid to create. He's not God. Yes. Am I talking to you? Yes. If he's God, he can create that and still handle that. Yes. Amen. Are you going to listen to me now? Yes. Only then can he qualify to be God. Yes. Nothing can tie his hands. Nothing can control, can control God. I tell you, when, when Jesus, look at this. When Jesus went in the garden of Gethsemane and they tied him, he allowed them to tie him. Yes. Mm -hmm. So true. Mm -hmm. And when Peter cut off the man's ear, he, he intended to cut off the head, but he got the ear. Yes. <laughs> Jesus, Ellen White said, effortless to lose his hands yes. and put the ear back on, as, yes. as if it was never cut in the first place. Yes. God can handle anything. Yes. Yes. And so, it doesn't matter how far you reach in sin, God can handle that. In, in the Bible tells us that the king, in the year that the king died, I also saw the Lord. Let me pause there and put a background. You see, King Uzziah ruled for over 50 years. Then he died and his son ruled. And the Bible says of both of them that they did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. But then, as, as you, excuse me, as you started to further, you discovered that in their reign, idolatry was still prevalent in the high places and in the grove. The king did nothing about it, and his son did nothing about it. And during that time, uh, Israel prospered. They became rich, they were wealthy, they built fences, they extended the army. All of that stuff is good. There's nothing wrong in having your own church building. Amen, church? Yeah. And having a state-of-the-art um, technical system in your church. You press a button, a screen come down, you press the button, it goes back up. Are you in your church? Wall-to-wall, yeah. -wall cushion pews, all of that stuff is good. But when you do that and you ignore the blatant sins in the church, yeah. something is wrong. Yeah. Because to the extent that you can deal with that, you undermine the purity and the unity of the church. Yeah. What much of church? Sin. What destroys a church? Sin. So Israel after a while begin to decline. You must decline. Whether you're a nation, a church, you are an individual, you must decline once sin is allowed to reign. So God looked at Israel and he saw that they were doing just about anything. They were worshipping idols blatantly. They didn't care. Uh, the, the, the judges were taking bribe. They ignored the poor. There was violence. There was bloodshed. So God wanted a man to preach. So he put a call on Isaiah. Now church, <laughs> let me tell you something. You know. When God put a call on you, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a hard and difficult thing. If, the thing with me, if you give me the job, I do the job. That's the thing with me. Now, and I don't care how much problem it get me into. If you give me the job, I do the job. <laughs> so when, when Isaiah was called and he saw the difficulties with Israel, he was, a, he was scared. No church, God in, in Ezekiel said to, to the prophet, 
They have scorpions and briars among them, but still preach. Are you getting it? These people have the ability to write letters to the conference. They have the ability to make a call and you're out, but still preach. Yes, yes, yes. Still preach. Some of them are, are highly connected in the upper echelon of the society. And they are powerful men. And if you offend them, they make a call and you're in trouble. Still preach. Are you not listening? Still preach. Because I have learned from experience. That when you preach God's word and you get into trouble because of it, God come on the ravens. Yes. yes. He put flesh in their beaks yes. and they give it to you. Am I talking to your church? Yes. Preach the word. Preach the word. Do what God says. Amen. The consequences Amen. are in God's hand. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 Preach the Lord. So Isaiah, and then the wife said as he looked. It was at the early temple in the holy place looking in. And she said, all of a sudden, the, the inner veil parted. And the inside became glorious, high, and lifted up. And that's what he saw. And the Bible says, I saw the Lord sitting up on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Now, now we are talking about qualifications for ministry. I should have said that. The first qualification for ministry is that you must have a vision of God. Yes. Qualification number one, you must have a vision of God and the vision must not be ordinary. The vision must be high and lifted up. Am I talking to your church? Yes. The vision must be exalted. And so Isaiah saw that. And, and I noticed, you know, the Bible says God was before I get there, it was high and lifted up. And I want you to understand, when I was a boy, going to the Church of England Church, and those of you who used to go to the Roman Catholic Church, you will observe it. Because the Anglican Church is, is, the, same, is the same methodologies uh, and culture that they use. And when the, when, when the, when the, when the so-called reverend, did you get that? Yeah. Yeah. Reverence is a form of respect that belongs only to God. Amen. Amen. Yes. amen. Can the church say amen? Yes. So call no man reverend. Amen. Are you in the church? Yes. And so and so the, the pastor now he, he's good. He, he's there's a flight of steps he's walking up on, and he goes way up there, and he's preaching to the people down here. Mm. But Jesus was down there with his people. Am I talking to your church? Amen. Amen. In the Roman Catholic Church, it's the same thing. They sit on a throne way up there, looking down at the people. In the pagan world, they would build what was called pyramids. And they were graduating steps going up. And there's a plateau where the pagans would worship Satan at the plateau. Are you in the church? So what Satan does, he tries to receive worship by imitating God's throne. Are you in the church? Yes. High and lifted up. But the problem with now, the thing is this church. I can't worship an angel. Whether the angel is fallen or whether the angel is unfallen, I can worship them. You know why? Because I prefer to worship the maker of the angel. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I rather, I rather worship him who is so powerful. He opened his mouth and he said, let there be birds. And there were birds. Yes. I want to worship him and the things that he has created. Mm. And so Isaiah saw God's throne high and lifted up. Then the Bible says in verse 1, he was not standing, he was sitting. Am, am I talking to you? In other words, God was not standing, he was sitting, he was ruling. God rules the entire universe. Am I talking to you? God is in charge, he sits at the center, and he orders the affairs of men according to his will and his purposes. Yes. And, and, and so the, the Bible tells me that his train filled the temple. His royal regal robes filled the entire temple. You've got to understand that when you see, when God permits us to catch a glimpse of him, it is glorious. Are you there, church? Yeah. In your morning devotion, when you catch glimpses of God, sometimes you'll just cry. Am I talking to you? Yeah. Sometimes when I catch glimpses of God, I take a pen and I try to write. But I just, I can't write fast enough, so I put a pen and close my eye. I just let it sink deep inside my soul. Isaiah saw God's throne. Around his throne was a rainbow. Hmm? And uh, 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 above God were the seraphims. 
and, and, and the, the rainbow emanates different colors, color, colors rather, and, and there's a rich light coming out from God, and there's a rich profusion and mixture of the colors and the, and the glory, and it was beautiful. And, and below the throne where the 24 elders and Isaiah looked at God, looked at all of that. But what impacted him was God's holiness. Yes. Yes. God's regal glory was beyond description. The beauty was beyond description. The height was, was way up there. And Isaiah saw angels coming in, angels going out. Uh, God orders the affair of the entire universe and God dispatches his emissaries to that planet and to this planet and they were flying in and flying out as they take orders from God. God doesn't move. He sits where he's at. Am I talking to your church? Yeah. And, all you, and all the planets are arranged around God's throne in concentric circuits. So God sits here and the other planets are around him, and they're out there, and out there. So God sits at the center, and he doesn't use a piece of stick to catch up all the planets. Am I talking to your church? He holds the planets in place by his power. Yes. Okay. They are falling down here and there. Just this mighty power Amen. keeps them in place Amen. in mathematical Amen. precision. Yes. They don't collide, for God is in control. Okay. Am I talking to your church? So I want a God like that to be in control of my life. Are you there, church? Yeah. So when a God like that hold me, reggae music can hold me. Am I Amen. talking to you now, church? Amen. Uh, movies can hold me. Amen. Uh, when my life, when a problem comes into my life, God can hold me. Amen. If he doesn't hold me, I want naked in my birthday suit. Amen. Am I talking to you? But if he can hold the planets, he can hold me. Are you there, church? Amen. God is at the center and he holds all things in order. Yes. God created man and if God doesn't live inside here, we become fools. In other words, we will turn to the things of the creator instead of the creation. Hello now. That's why when Adam and Eve lost the creator, they turned to the creation and they sowed fig leaves and put it on. Now, oh, church, I want the sisters to listen to me carefully now. Fig leaves cover only here and here. And fig leaves cover just a little bit of here. Are you listening to my church? And the problem I have, my brother, is that I see sisters coming to church on Sabbath morning wearing fig leaves. Oh, no. Mercy. Mercy. I hear church. Just fig leaves. When God sits at the center of our hearts, Amen. we don't look to the creation, we keep our eyes focused on the creator. Can I preach your word this morning? Amen. Amen. And so God keeps both planets and humans, angels, in their proper place. That's why he's God. That's why he's God. And so, and, and so uh, what God did, oh my Lord, is that he puts into his creation himself. <laughs> Let me explain that. God sits at the center and he balances everything. So he puts the law of balance in everything. So in music, balance is called harmony. Are you there now? In biology, it is called um, homeostasis. In, in physics, it is called equilibrium. In theology, it is called love. So God keeps everything in balance. In balance. And I'll come back to that. But, but, but God is high and lifted up. His, his, uh, his train filled the temple. We are told that Queen Elizabeth's train is 18 feet long. <laughs> and, I, I mean, I don't imagine that when she's walking, there are several servants behind her. Just, just you know, setting her feet to the right. Her train, 18 feet long. But, but God, his entire glory and his regal robe fills the entire, and heaven is big. Yes. Am I talking to you? God is glorious, he's majestic, he's different, he's wonderful. Can the church say amen? Amen. 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 And so, the, the, the seraphims are there. And I notice the Bible says that they have six wings. 
And, and we are talking about symbolic, symbolic language, you know. With, with the, they have six wings and with two, they cover their faces. So though they have an exalted position, they remain humble before their God. Are you there, church? Amen. Amen. Some of us graduate from university and we, we get proud. Yes. And st yeah, in other words, stoosh. Yes, sir. Yeah, that. <laughs> Your people from Chile don't understand anyway. <laughs> They're in up it up there, full of yeah. inordinate pride. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you, you remember when God said to, to, um, to uh, King Saul, when you were, no, the Samuel said to King Saul, when you were little in your own eyes, I could lead you. Mm -hmm. you remember that, huh? Yeah. Some of us are like that. When we are little in our own eyes, God can lead us. Yeah. Anytime we get big, God can't talk to us. <laughs> but the angels, they occupied exalted position, but they were humble before God. And the Bible says, with, with, with twain, they did fly. Huh? Yes, yes. Uh, so, so they are in, they are in a mission. They fly in, they fly out. They, they carry God's orders back and forth. And, and then the angels said, no. And they cried one, verse 3, and they cried one to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, now, now they, 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 they said it three times. Because they are reinforcing the verity and glory of the Trinity. But, but what does it mean when the angels said God is holy? Now I want us to, I want us to, I want to take the time with this. What does it mean when the, when the angels said that God is holy? It meant that God is separate from all that is common. Are you listening? It, it means that God is different from the rest he's cut off and separated from the rest it means that god is is the divine superlative he's unique he's the only one of that kind in his category yes. god is the only one of his kind yes. isaiah said i in isaiah he said i am god and there's none like me yes. i hold a unique position I hold a unique category. There's no one like me. I'm the best thing around. And I'm the best thing there is. Are you there, church? I'm the highest value. I'm the highest in quality. There's none in the universe like me. I am before all things. I am after all things. I'm the first. I'm the last. You are you there, church? Amen. There's none like God. Amen. Amen. The Lord. Amen. There's none like God. Yes. And, and all things find their, 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 God is the ultimate reference point. And all things find their meaning in reference to God. And I just explained that. God is at the center. The planets are around him and he holds them in order. Now if you and I are going to understand anything about us, we must understand us in the context of who God is. Did you get that? Uh, we develop that a little bit later on. So, so, so I can't. When, when, when so let, me, let me develop that. When Isaiah saw God, I noticed he said something. What did he say? He said, Woe is me, I am undone. Let me tell you something, church. When you're proud, you don't know who you are. You don't begin to understand your clearest self understanding comes in the light of who God is. Only when you see him first, you begin to understand who you are. The young man, the prodigal son, was in the pig pen for a long time. When the young man started to think about his father's love, the father's love, love clarified his understanding and his circumstances. For the first time, he began to smell the stench of the pig manure. Oh, God. Are you listening to me now? I worked in Jamaica for a long time. And, and the only time that the girl who lives in sweet house with the man realizes that something is wrong is when she starts to attend crusade and hear about the love of God. Yeah. And all of a sudden, when she go back to bed, the, the guy complains, I don't like this preacher. But since you start, preacher can't touch the girlfriend. Because she, she begin now to understand her value in the light of who God is. Am I talking to your church? Yes. And so she begin to long for something better. She begin to long to be like the one who created her. I'm your church. 
So Isaiah, when he, when he saw God, he saw himself. When he saw God's holiness, God's purity, all of a sudden it hit him how unholy he is. And all his hidden sins were unmasked in the presence of God. You can't hide them from God. Am I here, church? Yeah. They, were, they were unmasked before God. And Isaiah said to himself, Woe is me, I am undone. The word undone means I am in ruins. I didn't understand who I am until I became a Seventh Adventist. Mm -hmm. Your best self understanding is that a chief in a psychiatrist's couch is, at, is, is, is in front of God. Amen. Humbled. You Amen. Begin, when you see who you are, you can't be proud. Yes. People who are proud don't know God. The Bible said you are dust. Am I talking to you? Yeah. And we are, we are food for word. Dust the word, and unto dust thou shalt return. Did you know that? Yeah. From the day we are born, we begin to die, and we're going back to dust. Uh, one pastor was preaching, and pastor said, I am dust, and you are dust. I am nothing, and you are nothing. We are all dust. Yeah. At the end of the sermon, a sister walked up to him and said, You pastors, when you preach, you ought to know who is sitting in your congregation. The pastor said, so my sister, who are you? She said, I am Dr. So-and-so. Oh, yes. pastor said, that's good, my sister, but as far as the Bible is concerned, they are still Dr. Dust. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> when we recognize that we are dust, it is, it is the best self-understanding yeah. we could ever have. Yeah. Paul was at his best when he got up and could see nothing. Mm -hmm. Remember to knock him off his horse? Yes. Yeah. When he was blind, he saw more than when his eyes were open. You're not getting the church. Yes. When his eyes were blind, he saw yes. more than when they were open. Yes. The best place to be is in the dust at the feet of your creator. Amen. Yes. I can't tell any man that. That's the best place to be. And so Isaiah saw himself. And, and having seen himself, he then recognized that there was nothing he could do about it. So he cried, woe is me, I'm undone. But then God demonstrated his sufficiency. And he said, then, 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 then I noticed something in you know, verse 5. He said, woe is me, for I'm undone because I live, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Notice that Isaiah did something. He spoke about himself first before he talked about the people. I am a man of unclean lips. The people are an, of unclean lips. In other words, Isaiah saw himself first, he cleansed his life first before he began to tell people how to live. So those of you who are going to be qualified for mission, first you must see God, second you must see yourself. And you must clean up your life first before you tell people how to live. You can't live in fornication and tell people just to stop fornicating. Are you listening to me now? You can't do that. You have to clean it up first. I have to be careful. Uh, and, and then you see, it, it was necessary for Isaiah to have a humbled understanding of himself. Because if he did not, he would go out there and have a sort of pompous attitude towards sinners. Mm -hmm. He would have a contempt for those who have not yet given their lives to Jesus. For example, I, I took an elder with me when I was in Jamaica to visit a girl who was living with her boyfriend. When we got into the house, the elder was an old man, so he looked at this young girl and he said, You should be ashamed of yourself. Living in fornication. You should clean up your life. And the young lady was so angry. The, the, the Jamaican indecent cuss word was the tip of her tongue. You ever hear a Jamaican person? No, you never hear a person. No, none of you are from the Caribbean can test us. Now, who are you? We know the entire alphabet, so you know that they're part of it. Americans only one alphabet. It's, it's, you know the letter that they know, and they stuck on that. Jamaica, they know the entire alphabet. <laughs> them dangerous. And the girl was on the tip of her tongue to say some of it. But she kept it down because I was in there. The pastor was standing there, so she controlled herself. Yes. We don't go visiting like that. And you walk into the house and see the girl living in a sweetheart life with her boyfriend. You look around the place and say, oh my goodness, this place is so neat and pretty. Girl, can I live here? You, you with me? Yes. You, you don't tell her that she, she's 
in fornication. She already knows that. Yeah. That's why she called it to come. Are you there, church? Yeah. You have to know how to work with people. So the point I'm making, if God don't humble you and put your pride in the dust, yeah. you will go up there and look down on people and condemn them. Are you there, church? Yeah. But you must come to a place where you say, woe is me, I am undone. Had it not been for the grace of God, the man burning ganja out there is me. The man beating his girlfriend is me. The man and liquor is me. Are you there, church? The guy who is a pimp with his prostitute, that's me. Had it not been for the glory of God, had it not been for that life code plucked from the altar that touched my lip, touched my heart, I would be doing the same thing. Am I talking to you, church? Amen. So you need that, that, that humility before God before you begin to talk to people about their sins. Amen. I am not better than you. I'm just born again. Amen. Amen. You see, before God sends us, he works in us. Can the church say amen? amen. Before he sends us, he works in us. And let me tell you something what it takes says to me is God's call precedes our response. Are you getting it? I'll get there. Then, then, he laid upon my mouth that what God does in verse 7 is that he's, he does not only, verse 7, let me read it. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched my lips and my iniquity is taken away and my sins purged. Iniquity means that we are bent I am born in iniquity and shaped in iniquity. In other words, we are bent, we're born bent towards sin. Mm. We were born loving sin, we're half a sin. Without God, you smoke ganja. Yeah. You're, <laughs> am I talking to you? Yeah. You're born ganja, you take coke, yeah. you're fornicate, you lie your yeah. teeth. Yeah. 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 All kind of because you're born bent towards yes. sin. That's what that says. But when God takes that away from you, He also takes away your desire for sin. So, so, so He takes away. So you still love dance on. When He's finished with you, you don't love dance on no more. I used to love to stay up late at nights and just listen to Bob Marley. I mean, you know, I've got to have Kaya now. I shot the sheriff. Two little birds yes. sat by my doorstep singing sweet songs of melody pure. You know what I'm saying? I, know that song. Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to love that. Mm. Know that God has done something in me. Amen. The worst thing he can do to me is that is, is to knock me up in a car and turn a reggae. You don't want to hear it. Am I talking to your church? Yeah. For God takes away my, my bent towards sin and give me a brand new direction. Can the church say amen? Amen. I, and I don't like contemporary gospel music either. It's too whirly. Amen. That's for me. Amen. I, I, I cannot talk to you, church. Yes. I love sacred. Amen. Something that lifts me up to God's Amen. throne. And I catch glimpses of who Amen. he is. So I don't want contemporary gospel. Amen. You will hear me playing love song in my car. It has to be sweet, sacred, heavenly gospel. Amen. Am I talking? Because Amen. God takes over a beat bent towards sin and then turn me around. Amen. God works in you first Praise before he sends you. Can the church say amen? And too many people are responding to the call and they never get a call. Too many persons are entering ministry and they were never called to ministry. And they come in and they corrupt the ministry. But that's why I just preach straight. I just stay, I just preach straight. Just preach straight. <laughs> and so God cleanses us. You know, it it, it yeah, I, I listen to um this guy ah uh, in Jamaica that they put him in prison just recently. He has a karate name. Anybody remember his name? Ninja man. <laughs> you ever hear a man that one click your sister such a little ninja man? You never hear that name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a Jamaican top DJ. You know what the ninja man said? He claimed to have been baptized. Yeah. And ninja man came back after his baptism and said to the people, Me baptized, but my God not baptized. Mm. Are you listening to my church? Yeah. Oh God. You, you've got to understand that when God works in you and it is well done, Amen. everything that is on your right comes on your left. Amen. Ah, everything that is on your left and that comes on your right. Everything
everything on your right comes on your left side. Everything that was up is now down, and everything that was down is now up. That's it is radical. Yes. God's convert it is radical. Yes. So you come back when God finished with you, your language change. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so I don't when I'm saying good morning, you don't even say yo. All right, those days done and over. Are you not church? <laughs> you know, you're not listening to me. Yes. Those days are over. I remember when I was, I was going to school. I was not a Christian. I didn't, I didn't go, to, I go to church once in a blue moon. I was a word then. And, and, but I, I dress nice, brother. And I look decent. And I'm ambitious. Yes. And, and a guy saw me in my final grade. The guy walked right up to me and said, you see you? I know you're going to turn police, but before you turn police, I'm going to kill you. No, I wasn't a Christian. So I, I responded to him like, like a non-Christian would. So I said to him, when I graduate, you're the first boy I'm going to kill. No, you never get that. You're the first person I'm going to kill. Because you don't understand the American part. No worries. When I was a Worldian, I speak like a Worldian. Yes, yes. I act like a Worldian. Yes. But those days are not over. I'm Amen. done. Yes, sir. Am I talking to your church? Yes. When God is going to use you, He does something inside of you first. Then He sends you. Amen. If that doesn't happen, you're not fit to go, for you're not converted. He said that to me now, so my brother, God love you and I love you too. Can the church say amen? amen. <laughs> ah, so God purges and he cleanses. When God was finished, the, the, the third qualification, or the fourth one, is that you must not allow your pastor to push you into evangelism. Or tell her that if you come in with a soul, you give you $100. Isaiah said, I, verse 8, also I heard a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for me? Then I said, here I am, Lord. Send me. He volunteered for mission. God's call precedes your response. Then, then what I find interesting is that God called Isaiah to preach to a rebellious nation. And God told him that the, when he preached, the people are not going to listen. Mm. The, I, I said, Isaiah, when you preach, they won't listen. They make their ear, they, they, um, they, 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 they break up and sticking it so to speak. And they blind their eye. And as Isaiah preached for 70 years, no convert. Mm. But God said, preach anyhow. What I want from you is your faithfulness. Amen. And on our church, notice in the scripture, the emphasis was not on numbers, but on faithfulness. Amen. God didn't say, no, Isaiah, I want you to use, to, to baptize as many as you can in one year. And use those figures to, figures to judge things politically. So I can, you in the church? Yeah. Don't play politics with baptism. Be faithful. Yeah. In my local church, you don't baptize people. You baptize them when they're ready. You don't baptize them for political purposes. But you don't get that. So, so. <laughs> So Isaiah said, here I am, and Lord sent me. So he preached for 70 years. Not one convert. But he was faithful. Mm. No. Yes, sir. God called no one. God said no. Not that I like about Noah. Noah, is an end time. Noah has an end time theme. Mm. The Bible said Noah believed God. And in fear, it moved him to build the ark. He believed a storm was coming. And he prepared for the storm. Are you listening to me? Now, now, some of us know we only motive that we believe, but we don't believe. Yeah. Him that believed in the second coming of Jesus purified himself even as he is pure. Yeah. If you believe it. And so Noah started to, Noah took his own resources and started to build a ship and dry land. It is the most unscientific thing you have ever heard of or seen in Noah's time. There was no rain. You ever hear about rain in Noah's time? There was no such thing as rain. A mist came upon the water, the plants. There was no such thing as rain. So when God told Noah it's going to rain, when Noah told the people it's going to rain, they laughed. The scientist says, this defies science. It can't work. It never will work. And the people believe the scientists. 
Now I continue to preach. Yes, sir. A young man heard about what he was saying, and the young man said to went to his preacher and said to his pastor and said, Pastor, what do you think about what Noah said? The pastor looking up. No, I don't keep the Sabbath. No, I keep the Sabbath. Sunday is the best day to worship. And so the young man move. And as Noah continued building, yes, yes. one day the people saw. Look up in the truth here. The people saw animals two by two coming into the ark. That was a phenomenon that should have said something to everyone. But people went down to party just the same. Yep. And to hold on to their favorite sins just the same. And they, 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 they spurned the grace of God just the same. The animals went in. And then the wife said, a cloud came down over the door and covered the door. And the door just creeped. Down shut. And what God shut, no man can open. Yes. The people saw that. No one is found that were on the inside. God shut the door, the animals were in. And, and you, you have to understand that when the animals went in, no one didn't take meat in there to feed the lions. It was fruits and vegetables, and it was grass, hay, I don't know. And the people in the ark ate ark food. Yeah. Well, you know, this is the Menor church. Yeah. They, didn't, they didn't dry their, their turkey and their chicken and their, and their lamb yeah. and, and, and dry it and then take it to and then take it up into the ark. They took fruits, nuts, and vegetables before you enter God's ark for translation. You better cleanse your diet. Yeah. Yes, man. Oh, Can I say amen? amen. Yes. God amen. fix up your diet. No meat at the upon the ark. Huh? And the people who were on the ark, they, they wear ark clothing. Yeah. Am I talking to you now? Yes. So if we are people of the ark, we must eat ark food yeah. and dress like ark people. Yeah. And dress like people who know that a storm is coming and the only rescue is Jesus. Am I talking to your church? Yeah. And, and, and so the door was closed, the animals were in, and a man said, What is this? One drip, another one, and another one, and then the rain came tumbling down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it came in forth and harder and harder. And then we get to understand that the earth, the bowels of the earth was open, and the water shot up in the air 220 miles in the air. And then it came back down as torrential showers. Are you listening to me, church? That's a lot of water to go up and come back down. And as the water started coming down, oh, the ark just rocked itself a little bit. They oh, yeah. say, boat can dry, can, cannot sail and dry land. They're right. Yeah. <laughs> but the water was coming. Yeah. Am I talking to your church? Yeah. Scientists tell a lot of folk don't believe that Jesus is coming again. Mm. I've heard this present pope sat with some protestant pastors and they knocked down the second coming of Jesus. Yeah. This Pope yeah. and some other pastors, mm. one Adventist pastor was on it. Yeah. And when he spoke of the second coming, they mock him. Mm. Church, he is coming. Yeah. Yeah. Am I talking to your church? Yeah. He yeah. is coming! Yes, he is. Soon! Yeah. How will he come? The Bible tells us how will he come? Yeah. He will come with angels. With clouds and a visible form. That's what Acts chapter 1 said. Yeah. He's come, we shall see him as he is. Yeah. Whether you believe it or not, the water was coming. Yeah. And as the ship started to rise, yeah. some people clung to the side of the ship, pitched, put their finger in the tar and gripped to the ship. Yeah. But an angel shook it and all, and the hypocrites dropped back off in the water. Yeah. They weren't ready. They can't go in the ark. Let me explain something to you. God is not. God does not want to shut anybody out of heaven. You won't go there simply because you're unfit. And the White says, if God should allow the, the the unconsecrated, unconverted sinner into heaven, he becomes a discordant note in the melody of heaven. Heaven is uh, all those who are there. They are unselfish. They are king. They are pure. So this unconverted brother in heaven, this start looking around for a wrong bar. Are you with me now? Mm -hmm. And a brother, he's a discordant note in the melody of heaven. He can't get there. So those hypocrites had to go back in the water. And then the ark began to rise. I miss this part, I love it. God tests you in a church. God will test you. 
When Noah went in and the door was shut, for seven days nothing happened. Noah's wife said, oh, darling, no. Oh. You think you heard, right? One of the sons said, Daddy, maybe you begin, you should re-evaluate what we are doing. And take a second, because by, by the fourth day inside your feather is warm. You mean me now? Yeah. And the animals make noise and animals defecate and the stench yeah. in the ark. Oh yeah. God. How am I talking to you, church? Yeah. The church don't look good, the church don't smell good, but it's the best place to be. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Your yeah. pastor are not perfect, your church from first elders, and your other elders, they don't perfect, but it's the best yeah. place to be. Oh God, there's some stench in the church. Yeah. Still God's church. Yeah. Am I talking to yeah. stay on the ship is the best and safest place to be. Yeah. Amen. 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 God will not take you home without a test. Yeah. You have to test you first before you take you home. Yeah. But no one endured the test and the pastor test. No one said, God, my, my, my son, my wife, God says it. And I believe it. Amen. It's as simple as that. Amen. God says it that I believe it. And as the ark went up, in that thousands and thousands of people died. Women died. Men died. Children died. Because they did not believe the word of God. The Bible said, Noah believed it, it moved him with fear, and it prepared an ark to the saving of his soul and his family. Mm. Compare Noah with Lot. Lot lingered in sorrow. Mm. It cost him his wife and his two daughters. Mm. Are you listening to the church? Mm. He lingered when he should have gotten out. Lot, on the other hand, believed moved with fear and did what was necessary and it saved his soul, his wife and his children. Lot lost his wife and his two daughters because he did not move with faith. Church! Are you moving with faith this morning? Do you believe that Jesus is coming? Yes. Are you prepared for that coming? Are you moving with fear and saying, no, oh, there are certain things I watch. I can't watch that no more. There are certain things I eat, I can't eat that no more. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that, church? Yes. If you are doing that, then you are moving with fear to prepare yourself and your household for the saving of your soul. Amen. Pass me not to a gentle Savior. Hear my humble Christ. I understand. While another is the word called, do not pass me by. Amen. God is preparing a people for translation. A storm is coming. The Vatican is getting ready to take over. I want you to understand that, that the, in come November, there's going to be an election. This election decides who controls the Senate. Did you know that? Yes. The evangelicals who put Trump in place, they are now nervous because they want Trump to maintain the Senate. Because if Trump loses the Senate, then the evangelicals can't take can't achieve their agenda as in Revelation 30. Yeah. So the evangelicals are a fever pitch right now, working for Trump to get the, to get back the November election. The Vatican and all those who are involved are making the necessary preparation for takeover. Are we making that preparation to live with God? The ceiling is what will take us through successfully in the final crisis. It's time to weep between the porch and the altar and ask God to cleanse us and purge us and sanctify us. That what we think is right, what we say is right. Oh, gentle Savior, may God help us to prepare my in the silence of your heart. Talk to God right now. Tell him where you are falling down. What? Tell him what to struggle with. Tell him what to stumble over. And like Jacob said, oh God, I will not let thee go until thou bless 
They sing about heaven, but we focus on Jesus. Christ likeness is the goal, not heaven. Heaven is a fringe benefit. Jesus is the attainable goal. Christ likeness is that goal. Make us like you, Jesus. For we ask it and we pray and we say thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the church say, Amen. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ.